9 new wolf types were added into Minecraft. Hello there, Ray here, and let's take a look at everything new in today's snapshot. This is 24W10A, and almost everything we see today is going to come out in the next full release, which will be 1.20.5 for the Java edition. So drop your like and let's take a look at everything new in the snapshot. Let's take a look at each of the new dogs. First up is the Woods Wolf. You can see this one has some browns and tans in it while being lighter underneath. You can find this one in Forest Biome. Since there is so many different forests, this is the dominant wolf color. There's also Ashen, which is this kind of ash gray color. These can be found inside of Snowy Taiga Biomes. Then there is the Black Wolf. These are found in Old Growth Pine Taiga Biomes. It can be found in pack sizes from 2 to 4. Then there is the Chestnut Wolf, which is a variant that can be found in Old Growth Spruce Taiga, which is different than the Old Growth Pine Taiga. This one looks very unique with all the tannish brown colors. Then there's the Rusty Wolf, which as you expect it looks like rust, which is kind of a brownish red. And these spawn in a biome which you normally wouldn't find wolves, and that is inside of the Sparse Jungle Biome, which is typically found on the edge of a normal jungle biome, but the biome itself is relatively rare. You can find them in group sizes from 2 to 4. Next up is the Spotted Wolf. Now I have to say this one's probably one of the coolest looking ones. Kind of reminds you of like a calico cat with the oranges, the whites, and the blacks. This is also found in a location where we normally wouldn't find wolves. And that is the Savannah Plateau Biome. And the Spotted Ones are found in groups from 4 to 8. Then we have one of the coolest looking ones. And this is the Striped Wolf. It has these really cool stripes on it and it almost looks like a tiger. Now these are found in wooded badlands and you can find them in groups from 4 to 8. The next type is the pale variant of the wolf. These are found in just normal taiga biomes. You can find them in pack sizes of 4. Now the pale wolf is also going to be the default wolf when upgrading any of your previous dogs or wolves into the new versions. Now lastly is the rarest type and this is the snowy wolf. These can only be found inside a grow biome, and only one spawns in a group. Let me know which one is your favorite. Now you might have noticed that each of the wolves kind of camouflage with their biome. So you got like the rusty one that kind of camouflages with the brownest orange color of the jungle logs. There's also the spotted one which has like the orange of the actual acacia wood. It also has like the grays of the bark of it. It looks a bit like a hyena or a wild dog on the savanna. The black one camouflages with the dark spruce trees and the shaded canopies that these create. The striped one camouflages with the desert-like surroundings of the Badlands with the different types of sands and terracottas. The snowy one blends in very well with the different types of snow, even the powder snow. The ashen variant looks kind of like the stray, but tries to camouflage not only with the snow in the taiga, but also the darker spruce trees. The woods one camouflages well with the trunks of the oak trees and has counter shading like most animals in real life. The chestnut goes well with its biome, with the only one that doesn't quite make sense is the pale one, but maybe it's like an albino variant that you can find inside the taigas. And these wolves are probably based on the in real life different types of canines which live all throughout the world. So the snowy one's probably based off of the arctic wolf, or the black one could be this British Columbia wolf. The ashen wolf might be your more classic northwestern wolf look. The woods one might be your classic Eurasian wolf. The spotted wolf might be what we know as the African wild dog. The chestnut could be the Tibetan wolf, or even the Mongolian wolf. The striper wolf could be the extinct Tasmanian tiger. And the rusty wolf could be the red wolf. Which type do you think they correlate with? So if you want to find these new ones, you're going to have to go out exploring. Now if your goal is to just get a lot of dogs or wolves, then it's still worth making my wolf farms. This will only get you one variant of wolf, so to collect them all, you would definitely need to probably get Elytra and start flying to these individual biomes. Move the dog with your elytra. We have to touch the ground every so often. That way they can teleport to you as it won't teleport to you while you're just flying in midair, even if you are relatively close to the ground. But you'll have to avoid flying over top of large oceans where there's no land for the dog to teleport, which would cause the dog to just get unloaded on the previous landmass. Now before wolves would normally just spawn on grass blocks, but because they spawn in these new biomes, they have to spawn also on podzel as well as coarse dirt. Now previously grows biome could spawn in almost all the different types of passive mobs like sheep, chickens, pigs, cows, but now they changed it, removing all of those, so now these will only spawn in the rabbits, fox, and the wolf, being the new snowy rare wolf. Subscribe to be on top of all the newest things in the game.
The max number of lore as well as entries on a fireworks have been increased to 256. So go crazy putting all that extra information on your creative items. In this snapshot, we also got their continuation of updating the data pack for the vanilla games. So the recipes will accept the new components. Predicates will now check slot names. Slot names are just the different areas within your inventory. They all have unique names so you can easily move stuff in and out using commands. So now for different groups of slots, they have a single name. You can now use the execute command to count items and the information that goes with a banner pattern has changed in the way it's being stored. The extra information that comes with components that are in item stacks now have had their different tags renamed and rearranged. With last week's change where they removed NBT tags from items and came out with the whole components thing, as you imagine there was some bugs related to it, such as items that had similar properties weren't stacking together. Now in doing so, they did fix this problem when you come in to disenchant something using a grindstone, and you shift click this book here, it would see it as being a different type of book than a normal book. Notice this one says components being four, and this one says there five so when i shift click puts it in a different slot rather than giving them similar properties so they can stack together so collect this as a rare item before updating because normal books only have four components where these special ones have five but another rare item was also removed and that had to do with cursed books so we got curse of vanishing if you stick another cursed book up in this slot here the way grindstone works it would normally take your book and remove any enchantment and then be left with a normal book except when it comes to the cursed ones they don't want you to remove those so you can't actually do that with a grindstone so those are left on the book but you can see the bug is is if you put two of these in you end up having both books show up over here and when you actually click on the stack they actually stack together when normally you can't stack enchanted books together and this was a cool way to get stacked unstacked in survival. Just by shift clicking this, you can force them into your hotbar without them unstacking. But you have to be careful when using these because if you do pick them up and try to place them again, it could completely unstack them. So this is definitely one I would recommend going ahead and collecting as there is cool things you can do with stackable unstackables, which I cover in this video here and I'll have it linked down below. And by the way, I have an entire playlist all about rare and discontinued items, blocks, and mobs that you can collect in your survival world to show off to your friends as cool trophies. Other things related to the components that they fixed was the problem that every single sword in the game all did an attack damage of four, no matter how weak or strong they're supposed to be. Also crafted suspicious stews when eaten wouldn't give you the effect. And while doing these changes, they accidentally made the saturation one. Instead of giving you saturation for a very short period, it actually gave you saturation for an entire seven seconds, which would have been really OP, but they reverted it back. Chocolate boxes that had items full of NBT stuff weren't able to actually update those items so you just end up having a blank shulker boxes you can see a couple of mine just went completely blank because the items inside were considered invalid by the game so now you should get all your items back speaking of invalid items it turns out that some types of items were also considered invalid like having those custom paintings we actually had this happen to us on our server where we had some painting that just happened to be on the server couldn't be processed by the game so our entire server crashed and this is why it can be kind of scary when updating to these snapshots you just don't know what's going to happen but at least this bug has not been fixed another weird bug that we noticed during our testing is these particles you can see them floating around my player you might think that these are my night vision particles but I actually have the particles turned off. So this is what it would normally look if I had night vision particles, but there was this weird bug that even though you had it turned off, there would be these like little faint blue ones. So you won't have this in the newest snapshot. One of the bug reports that I made also got fixed and that had to do with arrows that have potion fixed. Notice this one here is putting off the particles, but if I would reload the world, once the world loads in, the arrows there, but the particles that should be coming off of it are not. Now the arrow still had its effect on it, but now with this bug fixed, we can also see the particles. Lodestones weren't working quite right from the previous snapshot. When you would right click on a lodestone and then come in and break it, notice that the compass switches back to just a normal compass. Also setting your gravity to zero and then hanging over the edge in a server that doesn't allow flying. It actually kick you from the server because it thinks you're flying even though you're not. 
They resolved three different bug fixes when it came to player heads, one of them even causing a crash. Besides fixing the whole NPT thing, they also came in here and updated the vault texture to make these pixels look the same no matter in what mode the little face is. Now come join me as I play around with the newest things in the snapshot. You can always find the IP to my testing server over on my Discord, and all my socials are always in the description of the videos. Thanks for sharing what I do with others, and I'll see you guys all over there. Bye bye